Hey guys, Chris here. Today we're doing the 120 kilometers an hour or 75 miles per hour range test in this, the new facelifted Volkswagen ID3 Pro. Pro means 58 kilowatt hours of usable battery capacity. So today we're gonna find out just how far this car can go on a full charge of battery. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna put this car into the chart where we put all the cars and see how well it performs and see how good it is compared to the competition. And I don't actually think we've run the Volkswagen ID3 in any range test in about two years, maybe more than two years. So we don't actually have it in this latest chart. So it's gonna be really excited to see how well this car performs. And also another thing, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get on with this test. If you saw my previous video, which was the 120 kilometers an hour range test in the Neo ET5, and then suddenly no more videos on that car. That is because I was sick last week. So I didn't make any more videos than that video, but don't fear because I'm going to have that car on loan from Neo again in a few weeks, and then I'm going to continue my suite of tests. So if you were just wondering about that, what happened? Well, I was sick, but we're still going to make those videos in a few weeks so that is pretty pretty awesome so guys we're at 83% I think we're gonna charge this car to 90% and then get on the road and I'll see you guys soon we are now Oscar Mike and we've been on the road for about 50 minutes now we are approaching the Minnesota Brua which is the first bridge usually our first checkpoint in these tests and where I talk about the average consumption. So thus far, 19.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. We do have dry roads and nice conditions, though there is a little bit of drip in the air. It may start raining. And also the heat wave we've had in Oslo for about the past month where we've had temperatures between like 25 and 30 degrees Celsius is now over. So currently it's about 17 degrees Celsius. I'm, I'm guessing we're gonna have temperatures between 17 and 20 degrees Celsius, a little bit warmer where we started. So, so this really warm weather we've had for the past month is now over for a few days. We're gonna have, yeah, poor weather for a few days now, and then the, the, heat, the heat's gonna come back. So looking to my left here, which is the Minnesota Lake, or Mjösa Lake, I mean, uh, it's completely calm. According to the wind map, we do have a slight, a very weak, tailwind northward now where we're moving about a meter per second i don't think looking at the lake we do have any wind at all super super calm and as i said the roads are are dry so we're continuing northward now oh actually consumption is dropping now to 18.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers which is really really good so i haven't driven an id3 in a long time and i've forgotten how much i actually like this car you know i'm a really huge fan of simple transportation cheap efficient uh just tra transportation devices you you could say that about the id3 but you could also say that it is a, an expensive car because it is it's maybe a cheap electric car but an expensive car and this facelift has brought a lot of nice updates that was needed for this car when it comes to the interior quality we have soft soft touch plastics basically everywhere in the front cabin now above uh my waistline really really nice i'm going to do a full review on this car so you guys can can uh can, can, can see that but yeah really nice improvement and also a different a little bit of different front fascia updated but i don't think there are any uh efficiency improvements but what is really nice this car is super solid to drive and also quite quiet so we have two different patches of asphalt here this is brand new asphalt doing 120 kilometers an hour i don't even have to raise my voice so it's a really nice car also very roomy front cabin rear seats also really really nice so i'm yeah looking forward to my week with this car because this is one of my favorite cars at this price point yeah look at this guys just a few minutes after i updated you we've hit some really really bad traffic i think there are roadworks up ahead and according to google maps here which this just came up like five minutes ago there was nothing here uh according to google maps it, we're gonna it's gonna take like 20 minutes extra so i'm not sure what i gotta do maybe i'm just gonna take notes here now and then stop the timer and then just subtract i don't know what i'm gonna do maybe this whole test is just uh yeah botched maybe i have to do this again i actually have no idea what to do 
almost an hour later guys and we are clear of traffic so this means the test the the range test is still on and the way i'm doing this is that for every time i i'm, I'm gonna have to stop because we're probably gonna have to stop for traffic on our way back because of the roadworks i'm just counting the time and the distance and the consumption and battery percentage battery percentage usage where we are able to travel at normal motorway speeds like now again traveling 120 kilometers an hour i just reset my timer the the trip computer and everything and then at the end of the video we will just uh, have to uh, s summarize everything up and then we'll get our average consumption but this route because of that will probably be be shorter uh 40 kilometers plus something like 25 so that's like 6500 and yeah, possibly only maybe like if we're lucky, this route is now going to be 130 or 40 kilometers instead of the normal 216 because though that that stretch of road works was over a really long long distance. But hopefully, we're still going to have a very usable test uh, because because yeah, I don't I, I don't want to come back here later later today. Um, and do this test when it's dark and we don't even know if the roads open then maybe it's completely closed because there it's in the middle of the night we've encountered that before in sweden and when me and volvo christian did um a race from also to gothenburg and back again we encountered just completely complete chaos um in, in the middle of the night so i think this is our best bet but there's going to be an asterisk with this test where it's still going to be a really comparable result but still because of uh, the road works we're not going to be able to go our normal distance of a little more than 200 kilometers finally guys we're back here at our starting point after almost three hours of a trip today usually this takes a little less than two hours so three hours is a really long time so we're now connected here to the charger at 19 percent and uh, this car should peak at 120 kilowatts. Uh, ambient temperature outside has around 19 or 20 degrees. And as you guys can see, the speed is slowly building up. So as we're waiting for this car to peak out, I just want to give a huge thanks to today's video sponsor, Recharge, which is the largest charge point operator in the Nordic countries, Norway, Sweden, and Finland with 4,000 charging points across all of these countries. They've been building out a lot of their charging stations lately and updating and upgrading a lot of them. Go check out my video with the 400 kilowatt chargers in Fredrikstad. That's an awesome video, which is the next generation of these camp power chargers, which in of themselves are, are really, really awesome. So if you plan on coming to Norway, Sweden or Finland this summer, if you plan on traveling in one of these countries and you are from one of these countries, I would highly recommend you guys to just check out where these new recharge chargers are. There will be a link in the description box down below. Okay, so we picked up a little bit of speed here, 21% state of charge now, and we are at 102 kilowatts. So I was hoping for a little bit better temperature because I've been able to get basically this speed at, I mean, hoping for a little bit better speed because I basically gotten this speed when it's been a lot colder outside. Now with an ambient temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius, this isn't too impressive. I was really hoping to get that 120 kilowatts of peak or at least closer than 101 kilowatts. Before we end today's video, let's take a look at the battery pack size, the consumption, and then calculate theoretical range. So today's test wasn't as straightforward as it usually is because of that traffic and roadworks, but I still think it was the correct decision to just keep on going and then stopping the timer, noting down the consumption, the distance, so I could actually only calculate the 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 numbers for when we were able to go at a normal speed 120 kilometers an hour on the speedometer so i think that was the right decision even though you know it took us an hour longer going back home and then going here later tonight maybe that wouldn't even have resolved anything maybe we still would have been stuck in traffic maybe the road would have been closed altogether and we had to go on some kind of you know secondary road so i'm really glad we did that and we were still able to go 170 kilometers at 120 kilometers an hour i'm going to do all the calculations in the chart so you guys can see that i don't have all of them in front of me now 
but average consumption today ended at 19.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So if we take the battery pack size of this car, 58.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, divided by the consumption and then subtract about 3% in heat loss, we get a total range under today's conditions of 296 kilometers, which actually is not too bad. It's not as good I was, as I was hoping it to be. It's we're at around 70.6% of a WLTP rate to range. And usually in Volkswagen Audi products, we're usually able to go much closer to that WLTP rate to range. Just take a look at my Audi Q8 e-tron test, uh, you know, last week or a few weeks ago. That car did 80% of its WLTP rated range. This doing 70, it's okay, but it's not as good as other Volkswagen Audi products I've tested, but still, 296 kilometers is still pretty decent considering that this is a small, smaller, cheaper car. You're still getting 300 kilometers, almost three hours on the road at motorway speed. So it's not too bad, but I don't think, as I said in the intro, that there is any improvement on the efficiency of this car. And maybe this car, if this car was on 18 inch wheels, maybe we would have gotten a little bit more range than on these 20s. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.